Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Faith. We're so glad you're here. Let's stand. I'm going to read to you from the scriptures, Colossians 3.15. It says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as, as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether it, uh, by word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to give God thanks. We're going to give him praise today. And we're going to lift his name up. So let's do that together. Let's sing We Praise You. Breakthroughs 
This might be a new song for some of you. We sang it online in the midst of coronavirus. God is so powerful and so amazing. And so we're going to lift up the song of ascent, whatever I walk through, wherever I stand. His name can move mountains. Amen. Let's sing this together. Oh, how high.
pastures we call grace A mighty river flowing upwards From a deep but empty grave Oh, I will praise I will praise you on the mountain I will praise you when the mountain's in my way you're the summit where my feet are so I will praise you in the valleys all the same No less God within the shadows No less faithful when the night leads me astray You're the heaven where my heart is In the highlands and the heartache all the same change oh God Amen There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in my dead let me dead beneath the water I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore and should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning either way I will bow to the things of this world I know I know I will never be
There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. Hallelujah. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. joy in our hearts, Lord, even times of stress and times of difficulty, Lord. I pray that in our hearts, Lord, we would turn to you. We've sought other things, Lord, God, that we'd release control to you or we've uh, taken control situations. God, you're in control, Lord. No matter how hard we try and no matter how hard we control the outcomes, we know that only you, only you. So we give that to you, Lord. Whatever it is in our hearts, Lord, whatever we harbor today, any bitterness, Lord, God, we give that to you. And we sing these songs out of praise to you, Lord. Not because we're perfect, but because we're imperfect and we need you. We need you more than ever today. So I pray you'd fill our lives, Lord, with your spirit, Lord. Where there are things that are uh, flaws, and there are many, character flaws, whatever they may be, Lord, I pray, God, that we would cling to you, lay them at the foot of the cross, put our pride and egos aside, knowing you. We'll fall short every time. But Jesus did not. Perfect in every way. Faithful in every way. Humble in every way. Meekness. Thank you, Jesus, for living a perfect life. Covering our sin. Washing it away. White as snow. We're forgiven, we're freed, when we walk in that freedom, when we shake off the chains that bind, give glory to God, the highest. May peace reign in our hearts, Lord. The waves <laughs> roll in. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We fear no evil. 
for you are with us. You are a rod in our right hand. You comfort us. Comfort us now, Lord. We walk through the fire. You're there with us. On the summit, you're there with us. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. Praise your name. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. It's great to have you here together. And, and all you folks at home uh, that are part of faith this morning and on a regular basis, we are so glad that you're here with us experiencing the worshiping God together, at least on video and in your homes. We have a couple of things that we want to just bring to your attention and update you on. One is that um, our intention is to be in the tents through August 30th and then be back in the sanctuary on two services starting September 6th. And so we'll have an, it uh, looks like 8.30 and 10.30, and we'll have to register to get into those because it'll be limited space. But we really are looking forward to have everybody back in. We'll take a lot of precautions and all the CDC guidelines and all those things to try and make it as safe as we can and enjoy worshiping the Lord together. But so remember, September 6th, we're starting back in. We'll still have the video up online, but we'll have sanctuary services spread out, distanced, and that'll be September 6th, 8.30 and 10.30. So we hope that you can be part of that. And if you feel like you can't be, that's okay. Just let us know you're out there and still listening. And uh, the staff and elders have started calling through some of the folks that we haven't seen in a while just to make sure you're okay and uh, check in with you and pray for you. But if you don't hear from us, we'd love to hear from you. So uh, with that, we also want to let you know that we will have communion on September 6th here together and enjoy that and come and remember what Christ has done and his faithfulness for us and to us. We're going to start today with our scripture. As we go to read the scripture, we want to pause and think about all that has been going on the folks that are in our lives that we need to be praying for. And um, I'll pray, but you know other folks that I'm not going to be praying for. And, and so pray with me. Pray along and pray for those folks that you know. So let's pray together. Lord, as we come today, we thank you that you are God. Even in the midst of chaos and, and changes and everything that's going on. Uh, we know that you never change, that you are the same, and that even through this turmoil, you've got a purpose and a plan and a calling in our lives to follow you. And so, Lord, open up our minds and our hearts to you today, that we would hear your word, that we would see the people that we need to connect with, to encourage, to share Christ with, to love on. Think of those that are in need of physical healing and, and been either through surgery recently or coming to surgery. We pray for them. We ask that you would bring healing and, and reduction of pain to their lives and their bodies. Lord, families are enduring a lot of struggle in this time. And we ask that you would uh, minister in those families. Help us to see those families in a way that we can see how to help and encourage other families. And Lord, for marriages and, and uh, even workplace relationships that are strained and stressed, we ask, Lord, that you would help us to be that light in the world, that aroma of Jesus Christ that we'll talk about today that brings people to you, to salvation, to your peace in their lives. So be with us today and help us to walk in your ways. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Our scripture today comes from Luke 5, 1 through 11. It says, On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, that's the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked after he sat down, 
He asked them to put a little out from the, la- from the land. And he taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I'll put down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that day that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And they had brought their, when they brought their boats back to land, they left everything and followed him. May God bless you with his word today. And as we get into this message titled Called, I want us to think about that, that scenario where you have these fishermen who have been out there all night. And along comes Jesus, who they've heard, they've interacted with, they've seen him around, and now he comes and this whole big crowd is there to to be with him. And as he comes, he says, hey, would you put me out a little bit away from the crowd? And, And it's the first confrontation with Peter, not in a bad sense, but in a positive sense. This confrontation of choice that Peter has, Simon Peter has, about what he's going to do with Jesus Christ. Just like we have the questions in our lives. I think of uh, the choices that we have in our lives about uh, what we're going to do, even with the political parties. You know, we have the Democratic National Convention going on in a different way than ever, but they're still out there given all the different uh, reasons that you should vote for them. And in just a little while, we'll have the Republican National Convention that they'll give you all the different reasons that you should vote for them. We have this choice that comes up in front of us. And they are trying to convince you of their way, of why you should vote for them. And I would just encourage you, and this is a a side note because we're coming up onto this this year and, and regularly, the idea of voting for the Republican Party the Democratic Party, neither one of those parties are God's party. God has his scripture, his word, and I would encourage you to vote and vote your biblical convictions. What does God's word say? Who can we serve but him? And how our vote goes is our expression of serving him. And so, Just like that, this choice that we have, this confrontation that we have from Jesus, even in our voting, Simon Peter had that same confrontation, this choice that he had to deal with uh, Jesus' request. Would you mind putting me out a little bit from land so that I can teach the people? Just a little request, but it engaged Simon Peter in his mission. Simon chose to seek after Jesus at that point. And so we want to talk about this morning this idea that we're called, just like Simon Peter right then, it was the beginning of Jesus' call on his life, changing the purpose of his whole existence. And so we're going to look at this morning seeking to know Jesus, submitting so that we might um, become like him and then serving so that we might introduce others to him. So seek, submit, and serve are our key words this morning. And here we go. 
The people were pressing in on Jesus. He asked Simon Peter, would you take me out? And Simon hops in the boat along with his partner and they push off from the land, maybe throw an anchor down and, and Jesus speaks to the crowd and teaches them. Simon Peter has a front row seat on that. Do you think it was by chance that Simon Peter and his partner, John and James, were right there at that time, that day, where Jesus was speaking to this crowd? I don't think so. It was a God appointment that Jesus set up in his sovereignty to meet with them, to extend this call to them to follow him. Matthew 4.19, just been for a while, it's been our sort of our church verse where it says, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That's the same invitation that goes out this morning to Simon Peter and his partners and brother. Peter got into the boat to listen to Jesus. Deuteronomy 6 says that, we should love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our might. And these words I command you shall be on your heart. What does it look like for us to seek the Lord? Simon stepped into the boat. For us, what does it look like for us to do what Deuteronomy 6 says, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength? You think of that, it says to bind his commands on our, on our hands, to make a sign that reminds us of his commands, to write on the doorposts of our house his commands, to diligently keep the commands of the Lord our God. Don't go after other gods, but seek after him. Do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. Teach the, the commands to your children when you sit down, when you walk by the way, when you do anything that you do. Would you teach the commands of God? Will we seek after God? In order to seek him, we need to read his word. We need to be in the word. We need to know him a little bit. We need to understand who he is. And so this challenge for us, like Matthew 6, 36 says, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things that they've talked about in the passage before will be added unto you. But to seek him. We have those faith moments in our lives. Um, my kids used to <clears throat> love when I would watch movies with them. You know, you think of, we'd watch a Star Trek movie back then, and, and uh, yes, Star Trek, and, and these great adventures. And, and in the middle of the movie, they'd say something about, you know, that there was really no God. And, and you know, they'd just sort of throw it in there. And I would just say out to my kids, did you hear the theology that they're teaching you right there? And they, they used to love when I would do that. Really, yeah. But that sense, in, in, Star Trek is teaching theology. Why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I use that opportunity to help them understand and see that the world around them is trying to bend them their way? How do we seek after Jesus and understand who he is? Have you ever read, now this will date me a little bit, but Calvin and Hobbes. Have you, we used to love that when our kids were small. They have Calvin and Hobbes, his, his stuffed tiger that comes to life in his mind, have some great theological discussions in their comic strips that were put together. And we used to talk about it. We used to just have fun with that. But where are those faith moments in our life? where we actually seek after Jesus, where it becomes part of everyday life. So, to seek to know him, to take the step that Peter took, that Simon Peter took, to get into the boat, to listen to Jesus. Where are you listening to Jesus in your life? Do you even hear him from his word, from your prayers? Get into the boat right alongside Simon Peter, and listen to who Jesus is. Secondly, Simon Peter had to take another step in this being called. Would he, would he follow Jesus Christ when Jesus actually said to him, 
after finished speaking, he says, go out into the deep, take me out into the deep and drop the nets for a catch of fish. They had been fishing all night and caught nothing. And you know, you know, I, I claim to, to be a worm drowner, not a fisherman, because I don't catch much. We go on these beautiful sunny days and, and we cast and we cast and we put worms in the water and we catch very little. Simon said, and he was an experienced fisherman, said, you know, we fished all night. That's when you're supposed to fish. And we caught nothing. And you want us to go out into the deep and throw our nets where there aren't going to be any fish? But this is what Peter says. He says, because of your word, because you've told me to do it, I will do it. There is that submission to Jesus Christ, that submission to his command, recognizing that he is master, Simon Peter calls him, master because of your word, I'll let down my nets. I don't think we're going to catch anything, but I'll obey what you said. What does it look like for us to submit our lives, our will, our desires, our knowledge to the will of God for Jesus to make that difference in us. You think of that when Simon was challenged but said yes. James 4 says this to us. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God. Purify your heart. Humble yourself. There is this sense where we need to follow Jesus Christ in submitting our will to his. Romans 8, 7 says, the mind of the flesh, the flesh seeking after the world, seeking after other things other than God, the things that we desire more than him. It says the mind of the flesh can't submit to God. It's opposed to God. And so there is this call on us, if we will follow Jesus it means submitting my life to him. That he is first. That he is in control. That he's the one giving the commands. So it, Simon Peter does. He drops the net. And can you imagine his shock when it almost pulls him over the side of the boat because the nets are so full of fish that the nets begin to break and the links on the strings and the nets are just popping because of the number of fish they have. And so he calls to his partners on the shore, John and James. He yells out to them, John! And he waves and he calls them out. And they come alongside and they fill both boats with the fish that weren't supposed to be there. You see, there is no chance that this is circumstance and it just happens. Peter knows right then and there that this is an act of God through Jesus. This is the Lord in front of him. And he actually does that. He refers to him. He says, depart from me because I am a sinful man, O Lord. Before he called him master. Now he's calling him Lord because he recognizes this is a man from God. This is an act of God. And he recognizes his own sinfulness, his own disobedience in his heart, his own doubt. And he says, depart from me. I, you know, he was afraid to be in the presence of the Lord. To recognize our sinfulness, to allow Jesus to be God, to submit our lives to his lordship. You see it happening in Simon's life right there, right then. Will there be other times in his life where it has to happen again? Absolutely. Just like you and me. And isn't that reassuring that it, it's not that I have to be perfect, but just to recognize my sinfulness, to recognize that I've blown it and allow God to speak to me there. You see, when he said that to Jesus, Jesus didn't condemn him and say, if you'd have only believed, but forget it. I can't use you. No. Jesus said, do not be afraid. 
You see, Jesus invaded Simon's private world. He came into his world, confronted him with who he was. And Simon Peter recognized that he was a sinful man, that he was not worthy of this man of the God to be in his presence. And so Jesus said to him there, after invading his world, confronting him with the truth, he says, don't be afraid, Peter. Don't be afraid, Simon. Simon Peter. Simon becomes Peter. They change, God changes his name. But he's challenged him instead with his purpose in his life. He says, do not be afraid. For now on, you will be catching men. And see, he confronts him with, his, with faith and his purpose in life and challenges him right then. Instead of condemning him, he extends his hand out and says, get up. Let's walk together. Because I have a great adventure for you to actually serve so that others might be introduced to me. And that's the third section this morning, is that how will we serve Jesus Christ in our lives? Will we actually step out of the boat as he did when he got to shore and leave everything? I don't mean that everybody has to leave their job and their home and do all that. Some people will be called into ministry and to do something different across the ocean, across the community, across the country, wherever it might be. Many others of us are called to serve right where God has planted us. We're already there where he wants us. It's a matter of will we serve him where we are. When Simon Peter decided that this is something that God is doing, he took that first step of serving when he called out to his partners and he engaged them in the ministry. That whole idea of introducing others to Jesus Christ He engaged James and John and called them in to the experience with Jesus Christ. It was an event. They came out to save his boat from sinking and to be part of that. And they became part of that experience with Jesus Christ. That's what he's called us to do to serve. If we are engaged with Jesus and living our lives with him, What does it look like for us to turn around and invite somebody else along into that experience? That's all that he's asked us to do. That's all that he wants us to do, is simply invite someone along and tell them who Jesus is. He says, Jesus did this, help us save the boats, get all these fish in the boats, and they got back to shore. And you think, man, what a haul they had. And right then and there, the four of them left and followed Jesus. He was a greater priority in their lives than the greatest haul of fish they'd ever had. Is that who Jesus is in your life? Greater value than the biggest haul you could ever have. It's a picture a metaphor of what is to come in fishing for people, this great response that they had, this great response of this huge number of fish that came up. And there is the crux of serving God, this picture of what he wanted Simon Peter to be doing, to serve him. They went with Jesus, leaving everything. 2 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15 says this, Christ leads us in triumphal procession. Through us, he spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him. We are the aroma of Christ among the people. Now, I don't know about you, but there is nothing better when I walk in the door of the house than the smell of chocolate chip cookies being baked in the oven. You walk into that and you just start to salivate and and just all I can think about is what will that taste like? Think of what this says in 2 Corinthians, that the aroma of Jesus Christ, the fragrance of the knowledge of him, is that how we are with people? That they look at us 
they experience us as this great aroma that draws them into Jesus Christ. Here's the interactive section this morning. As we get ready to close, I want you to take just a couple of minutes. Those of you that are at home, um, take a couple of minutes and to talk with yourselves as I'm doing this. What does it look like for you to live this out, to serve? How can you serve your neighbors? What could you actually do right now to serve your neighbor in the name of Jesus Christ? Could you do their lawn? Weed their gardens? Make sure you know what weeds are and not flowers. Don't pull their flowers that haven't bloomed yet. But could you do something like that? Could you go shopping for them? What about your workmate? Could you do something to help them? I know it's different times, and so we got to be creative. But how can you, right now, talking about it, come up with some ideas? And I'd love for you to text them to me at my phone number, email them to me at pastorbob at faithcrossroads.org. Ways that you can serve the people around you so that they might smell that aroma of Jesus Christ. So they might see the love of Christ through you. What does it look like to, for you to disciple your children? We're getting ready to come back in on the 13th of September with nursery. Yes, we're starting on September 6th with our two services, but it's a holiday weekend. We'll have communion, but no nurseries, no Sunday school. The 13th, we'll start nurseries. And then on the September 27, we'll start um, with other activities as we lay that out and talk about them more. You'll hear them about how we can do Sunday school, how we can do adult classes, small groups, all that stuff's coming. What does it look like for you to serve, to be part of this church on mission, called to follow Jesus Christ, that he might make you into a fisher of men? We're not just here to have church. We are called to be the church for each other, for the world around us, like Simon Peter, like Jesus himself, to go and make disciples of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to save people for eternity, to do what it says there when he says to Simon Peter, you will be catching men. It's, his, it's snatching alive, it's catching alive people saving them from hell to eternity to follow Jesus and become his people, fishers of men. Let's be the church together. Lord, as you confront us with your word, help us to follow you. Help us to be your church, alive, living, with this call that we are fulfilling together to be fishers of men, to follow Jesus in our life, to look like him, to seek Jesus, to submit our will to yours, and to serve so that others might know. Lord, may we be the church alive, living, and growing for your glory. Amen. Thanks for being with us today. Have a great week and share your stories with us about how you followed Jesus Christ and saw that happen.